A very good morning to you. It is Wednesday, the 2nd of September. Um, I can't believe sort of the summer is almost gone. We still got nice and summery weather out there. I'm still wearing sort of short sleeves, but um, I have taken out my winter slippers from the cupboard today, which is sort of like a, a furry one and it comes up. I do, um, I, I have to have a warm feet. When I'm sitting here in the office and working on bits of pieces and obviously my legs are under the table, I do love to have a warm feet. Right, how's everybody today? Um, yesterday, thank you so much, Sarah, for the lovely demo you did. Um, it was just phenomenal. The, so many of you loved the design. Um, well, it, it's, it wasn't all the design, but we used new beads with it, and you just can see that um, just by changing one little sort of aspect of um, one little um, sort of ingredient of a bracelet can make it even more sparkly and even more nice. Right, let me just get the comments up and say quickly hello to you and we're going to get making. Good morning Ruth, Margaret, Janet, Diane, um, D and Tida, Rachel, Judith, Margaret, Teresa, Michelle, Alison, Mina, Paula, Gwen, Julian, Lucy, Joke, Margaret, um, Jen saying, hi there Kitty, good to see you from Weston Supermare. Um, hi Jen, Ka good morning Carol, Annie, Maxine, Joe, Camille, morning Robin, um, Elaine, Sheila, Alison, oh there's so many of you lovelies are here, morning Catherine, um, morning Sylvia, I think I got, I'm working from home today but I got Molly or Simon at the other end answering any of the questions you have. Right, today's project, what we're going to do, dun dun dun, we're going to go through how to um, add your little 10 millimeter rivulets into your settings. Now we had this project back in, I think it was April, my end of March or beginning of April, quite a long time ago. And since then we had it on Create and Craft. I'm going to turn you down so I can show you the samples um, nicely on the camera here. Because they are so, so sparkle. Let me just add myself in the corner here so you can see me as well at the same time. So we had this project on, um, oh, I don't know, sort of May time on creating craft as well and a lot of you got it because it's such a lovely you can make a rainbow pattern with it or you can you can do loads of different bits of pieces and I will show you the pack just in a sec but I love 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 this jewelry we had different configurations before what you can do with it if you buy them separately obviously you can um, ombre your colors you can do a lot of things with it um, they're just really really sparkly um, we had a couple of requests that if you can show it again how to set them into the settings um because so i think when we do on create and craft um you haven't really got that much time to demo everything yes bling bling and um, rachel is saying bling bling i really really do love it i do wear um i got a blue one one of these upstairs um and i do wear that quite a lot really nice and easy and relatively cheap make um you can really like you know but it looks expensive i think that that's what the great thing about it they do look really really expensive there's another color of bracelet here they do look very very expensive so it's um it's up to you how you want to use it now um we got a couple of kits on the website today we got our rainbow bundle where there is and i'm just i'll show you i'll bring up the website and i'll show you what you exactly get in it but you get so much here that um, if I go to my desktop, bring up Safari, right, so fourth one on the side, you got Facebook tutorials, if you go in today's Rainbow Rivoli, now we added the earrings separately, if you just want one or two pairs of earrings, but there's ours on earring kits and I will show you in a minute. These are great because these earring bags, we had them made, um, we had them manufactured for us. So they are the perfect size to have your rivoli. So very easily, but like in a couple of minutes, you can have a pair of earrings, which is, looks, um, you know, very professional, store-bought and really, really nice. 
no, the big bundle is here, which I was um, want to show you. Now, this one has 200 rivulets in there. So you do get, um, there's 15 different colors. You do get quite a few of each one of them. You get 100 silver backing and 100 gold backing for it. And you get spacer beads as well. You get your elastic stringing in there. Now, if you bought all the little rivulets and the holders separately on our website, it would be £74.80. Together in a pack is £29. You can make, but well, it depends on the size, I guess what size you want to um, make it at, you can make um, 10 or 12 bracelets depending on the size. Right, let's come back to here. Right, so in your kit, it comes in a nice little box as well. But for £30 to make 10 of these, I think that's really, really good. And even if you just gift it and um, or, or you have your little craft fairs, because I think they're sort of starting back up now um, soon. I know a couple of ladies who said um, they have got some craft fairs booked up. Right, let me just show you the earrings before I move any forwards. So they are the earrings. They are really nice. They do really look like store-bought and really, really sparkly. Now you can add any, sing any different colors of Rivoli in there. We have the earring finding six different colors. So we have si the silver tones and the gold tones. So you would have silver, rhodium color that's got a little aqua in it. You have um, a gunmetal black, you have gold, you have champagne gold, and you have rose gold as well. That's a gold with the uh, um, yellow one. Oh, Carol saying, cloudy here in sad Devon too. We are quite bright here and sunny outside, but um, it's really, it's. I, I think it's cold now. But when I, I, I hate to have a cold feet, and um, that's what's happening at the moment, I guess, as the temperature drops a little bit. Right, so you get silver and gold backings as well. Now, the backings have two holes on them. So if I turn it, you can see it. There's two holes going through, and that's how you can attach it. Now, you can attach it in both of those holes and use it more like a bracelet bar, or you can just use one line. I have made a necklace here, and I don't think I showed this to you. And just run up on the top line, and these sort of just dangling down at the bottom. This one is really nice to wear as well. So there's various different ways you can attach it. Now, in your kit, you have your elastic strand. I love elastic bracelets because there is no, um, you know, you can very easily take it off or put it on. Um, and very comfortable to wear as well. So there is two ways you can do your bracelet. You can either um, string this on first and make the bracelet base to the size you want because before you add your little rivulets in there the hole is free and you can see what you where, where are you supposed to put the string through i like to add, i like to add my rivulets into my holders first which i'm going to show you both ways um apart from one at the end where we're gonna hide the knots inside one of these rivulets um See, so I'm going to go through one hole and straight through all the other side and come out the other end. And we're going to use two different separate elastics, so it's going to be two rows holding it all the way up. And I'd like to add a little spacer bead in between just to sort of add a little decoration, as you can see. You can't really see it that much, but just keeps that little bit of a gap. But you can add larger beads or you can add pearl beads, as I have in some of these. Um, in between you can do your own design I guess right so adding the crystal in is so so easy um, depending of I suppose how much strength you have in your fingers what I like to do is just pick up a crystal I'm just holding I'm just resting that really on the top of my middle finger and I'm going to hold this between my thumb and index finger and just place it right on the top of it. So it's nice and level. If I turn it to the side, 
you can see you just about to see the edges of the Rivoli. The Rivoli is not going to sink into your holder because it's not designed to do that. It's just um, designed to sit right on the top and um, sort of give you a little bit of a lip all the way around. If you would sink inside the Rivoli then you would have the problem that it might um, get slanted. So one side will go in more than the other side because it's not a flat back Rivoli, the Rivoli on the, if I show you, it has got like a pointed back and you know the front is domed as well. Right, so you can, there's two ways you can do it. You can either hold it like a sandwich with your index finger and your um, thumb together and I'll take, if you haven't got much strength in your fingers and you take your pliers and just fold that little prong down and then I will turn it fold the next one down and turn it and fold the next one down turn it and fold the last one down now I do have a little bit more strength in my um, fingers so what I usually do I place it on the top making sure it's nice and equal and then I fold the two opposite prongs just with my fingers on the top of my Rivoli just like that and put this to the side and I batch make it so let me just zoom in on this a little bit for you I would batch make this one so um, I would just go along and keep on making them until you know I have enough or I have a pattern what I want to do and then I would come and just do another one quickly and I would come with my pliers and just tighten up the sides but with this one I just sort of temporarily, temporarily secure them in there and just put them to the side and keep on going and then I will come back with my pliers I will fold the ends and just make sure they're really nicely folded down just like that once I have enough, then I would take my elastic. I'm just going to take a few of these beads. Question, are the Rivers glass or acrylic? They are acrylic lovely. They are really nice quality ones. And because they are acrylic, they're quite light in weight as well. So it's really nice to work with. Right, so when you're getting your end through if you got your river in there already the hole is free all the way through so if I turn it I'm not sure you see you can see it all the way through um, so you try to hold it as sort of vertical as straight as you can the end of your elastic and I just sort of poke in there and sometimes you have to sort of play a little bit of um, tug and pull here so I just um, trying to find the other side but there it is it's came through and I'm on there I'm gonna add a little two millimeter spacer bead on here take that down as well and I'm gonna add the next one now the only thing you need to make sure that um, you are adding them in the right so if you go into the top hole on the first one go to the top hole on the second one as well I'm pulling it up all the way around and just keep adding them on just like that I'm just gonna add this one there and that's it really that's how easy it is to add your little where are you there we are acrylics to your elastic strand and then once you had enough, I would come back and add another one. Now the earring is even easier because you don't really need to uh, do on um, anything sort of really special at all. You don't need to string it on or you don't need to, you just need to fold the prongs down. So that's why I love doing the earrings because they are really easy to do. I'm just going to get them out so you can have them in so many different colors. I am going to do a... Actually, I'm wearing a black top today with a white and pink flowers. 
So I'm going to do a gunmetal with pink. So I'm just going to pop these to the side. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold this just between my fingers. Does anyone else chuckle at the wrong words put in by the auto captioning? Oh, so that is my accent, I'm afraid. Um, Simon laughs at me as well because I say things and it comes out completely wrong, completely different. But um, I hope there is nothing naughty I said or, or not, nothing naughty is translated to. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just holding the earring as it is between my fingers, thumb and index finger, going to place the rivoli on the top of it, just like that. Now, the prongs is slightly different here because as you can see, they are thinner. So you only got one side little sort of line and the prongs on your bases are like this little sort of U or D shapes with a hole in the middle. Now, the prongs or this one are definitely harder to fold in because I think it's a you know it's just a different material they are iron based and they are brass based before plating so when I do the earrings I'm not going to attempt to push it in with my fingers because these prongs are quite small as well I'm straight ahead I'm going to go and give it my pliers holding them shut doesn't matter what pliers you have this could be um a round nose probably wouldn't work very well. A flat nose or a chain nose. And all I'm doing is just pushing the prong down on the top of my earring. Then I'm going to turn it and do the same thing on the next one. And just start turning and doing the same thing on the next one. And on the last one as well. And that's how easy we have a pair of earrings. These are quite nice because they're secure ones. So they have got this little thing at the back, which when you put it on, I'm going to put this in, that it keeps your earrings. And I do have the problem because, you know, there's little rubber ends, what you have on your earrings. And um, you can wear them with, um, I'll put the other camera on in a minute. Let's make the matching pair for this one. So I can wear it today. Um, I do keep forgetting to put the little rubber ends on my earrings and sometimes it do fall out of my ears and these ones are great because they have this safety back on it so they're not going to fall out so pink with our black come to finish again I'm just going to place it on making it sure it's not slanted anywhere it sits nice and top I can just see the lip of the rivoli all the way around as I was turning it, I moved it. So I just if if it's if it's at any point, if you end up like that, that it is um, sort of one side showing up the other side, then just take it out. I like to sort of put it down on my mat and pick it up, keep pick it up by the corners and insert it in there again, just to make sure we get a nice and even finish. And then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to fold these ends down. Really easy, very quick makes. If you are, you know, got a little store somewhere, this is what you can make absolute maximum profits on because, you know, the materials what you use for the earrings are, you know, pennies really. And that's it. And I'm just going to put this one on as well. Right, and I'm just going to turn the onto the big camera so you can hopefully can see them. Really nice little dangly ones. I really do like them. You can make them in any color. Jenny's asking, are they hypoallergenic? So, um, all our materials are in line with um, well, the EU's sort of lead and all sorts of. Um, 
guidelines. Now, if you are really, really, uh, you know, if you're allergic to sort of different metals, my mom is actually allergic to gold, bless her. Um, if you are allergic to different metals, what you can do, there is a little thing called jewelry shield. You can buy them on Amazon or I, th I think some of the, um, you know, some of the places sell it as well, some of the bigger shops. And it is just like a nail varnish. It's got like a little brush end. And all you need to do is to brush the part of the earring what goes through your ear. So I would just brush this part of the top and that gives a coating, sort of a nylon coating to your wire, which is then in contact with your ear and um, you're not going to have a problem with it. I got one of those for my mum because bless her, she can't even wear um, she can't even wear gold earrings. Oh, there's the same kitty. They go well on my stall. People love the different colors. Um, yes, yeah, so you can make them in any colors. You can do any different style, any different, you know, um, any different colors of rivulets with any different colors of. Um, Sorry, I just need to plug my laptop in because yesterday we were quite late at work. We didn't get home until, I think it was about half past seven. And I left my charger of work for my laptop. And this morning I was like, a, I was a bit worried because I thought if I run out of charge, what am I going to do? We had 12% left. So Victoria popped into work and got it from me, bless her. Um, she drove in and got it saved, saved saved me but um actually we that that's that's it and there's nothing really else I can show you about the river is so easy to make do you have a go but you're saying I have a silly question but how would you finish the elastic bracelet off right oh sorry let's let's go back to the elastic bracelet and um what shall we do because I did string one on um I tell you what we do we take this necklace apart and string it up for the bits of pieces for a bracelet very very quickly because it's really cool how you can how you can hide the last bit I'm just going to take this apart Right, okay, so we got all our elements made up. This one is this one is just a random necklace I had. I didn't want to sort of sit here and make you um, watch me adding all the tops. I'm just going to put a pattern out. I'm going to do a nice monochrome pattern. Now don't forget these rivulets and the holders are available let me just add myself there so you can see me in a corner. Are available um, separately on the website as well. You get 10 pieces of the Rivoli and 10 pieces of the holder. So I like to put my pattern out before I string it up. So I'm making sure I'm picking up the right colors because you know me. The, um, you know, I can, I can make all this up and sort of sit and relax and... Um, just watch a movie with the kids, but they constantly see there's already a little mistake in there. Um, the kids can come in and then distract me from what I'm doing, and then that's when you pick up the wrong color. And the amount of times I do it, um, picking up the wrong color. So I'd always like to just sort of put out my pattern before I start picking them up to make sure that I have a right amount of crystals, rivulets, the right amount of rivulets, as well as the right order. Right, so I'm just going to take the elastic and we're going to very quickly string it up. Sorry, I am going to bore you for just a little longer. I should have strung one all the way. make sure your elastic is nice and straight and then it's just gonna I think this if the end is a little bit bent then I just trim it ever so slightly 
so they get a nice and straight end. You can also add a tiny bit of nail varnish to the end to make it more a needle like so it becomes more of a stiffer material. But I just sort of twirl it all around. Oh no, actually, that's not. I need to go into one of these. So I'm sorry, I'm telling you porcupines now. You need to start with an empty one and you're not going to go through all the way through, you're just going to go through the second hole because what we're going to do when we get all the way around, we're going to come through the other side of this free one and not the elastic inside. And once we have both um, strings knotted, that's when we will add the rivoli to the top. So, bead between. What's going on with me today? I'm just adding a little two millimeter spacer bead and pulling it down. And then I'm gonna add my first rivoli, which is already in the holder. Another spacer bead. And so on until I get my desired length. They do come together quite quickly, I guess. Just sort of a little tugging and twirling inside there. Come on. Let's turn it around. Sometimes I find it's easier to go from one um, way to another. It's depending how they punch the hole on the base metal. The base, another little space a bead and just keep going on so they are 10 millimeter in size and you're adding a little space a bead between so it's about 12 millimeter per space a bead and rivoli I guess you're gonna have on your pattern so come through and I'm just quickly gonna add a few more and then we're just going to knot it together. Yeah, that's right. Oh, this is saying they're so they lovely and sparkly. Oh, yes, they are. And to be honest, um, the good thing about them, they are quite inexpensive. You can really, you know, wear this with. I always say wear, wear, wear something like this with force because if you. You know, you're always only talking about pennies here. I love stuff like this for the beach because even if you lose it, it wasn't really expensive, but it did it did kind of look expensive and it was good. Come on, where is the end? I think Sarah does it slightly different way. She would string up all of the empty... Um, there we go, we came through all of the empty holders on first and then she would add the rivulets to the top so I guess it's easier to string them up when they are empty but um, I like to do it this way because then I visually I can see what um, what I'm doing oh look this one just went through just sailed through so the only thing you have to be looking out for is that you're going through the same way they're asking use how many so for actually I can show you because this is where is the bracelet gone this is Sarah's size and she's got sort of a tiny little wrist so she's used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 for a bracelet don't forget you get 200 holders and crystals in yours. So my one, which is, I used 18 in here for my bracelet. And I got um, a larger wrist. But that, that just fits me nicely. Depending on, you know, this is the beauty of making your own jewelry. You can do whatever size you need to be. I always find that 
I do like some of the high street jewellery and I did ask, um, I do ask like a Christmas time to, um, my hubby to buy me one or two or you know something because when you make your own jewellery you always want that one special piece what was made for you I guess or like even though I'm making my own jewellery I love receiving jewellery as a gift and um there was this bracelet where I really, really wanted, but even the larger side was, it did fit me, but it, I like my jewellery a little bit loose, so I had to take it back and it was a bit hard, heartbreaking. Um, I really, really liked it. Earrings I'm fine with, but it's bracelets. I suppose I wear the most. So for a larger wrist, use 18 or 20, 18 to 20. For a smaller one, about 16, 17. Right, there we go. Hold it nice and straight. Hold it this power up to it. And there we go, we're going through it. Danny's saying I have kitty size wrist. Oh, bless. I think it's sometimes that's sort of the reason why we start making things um, because we either a sort of a bit of an odd size and you can't get it or not not even not even I'm not even just talking about sort of jewelry making but um, any sort of crafts if if like you know you want a, a rug for your bathroom but it has got the slightly odd size and um, you can't buy it and then you perhaps look into how to make a rug for your bathroom or anything crafty. Well, I'm just going to add a few more and I'm going to show you how to knot it. I know this is going to be a tiny bracelet but I don't want to sort of bore you all morning here watching me just stringing um, Lauren is asking question, could the Rivoli be pointed with wire to make a shape Christmas decoration? Yes, you could. And I had a necklace. What did I put it on that one? No. I bought home so many trays yesterday because I'm working from home and... Um, I had a necklace here which had a pointed end. So if you wanted to do a point on your holder instead of going on parallel, you sort of go corner to corner. But you could use it for loads of different things. You could use it in the home deco. Right, so I'm just going to add one more and we're going to knot it together. I know it's going to be a very tiny bracelet, but you will get the idea. So after you pick up your last Rivoli holder with your Rivoli inside it, let's turn it around. There we go. I'm going to pick up my last little spacer. And I'm going to go back through the front and just come through the other side of this little holder so both of my ends are coming out inside of this last rivoli and then I'm going to knot this together now even knotting us designers do prefer different ways to do it um, sometimes I prefer three half knots and um, Sarah prefers a surgeon knots. They're both perfectly okay and um, it's just up to you what you like. So a half knot is you sort of take your ends, you cross it over and then you throw one end around the other creating these little loops and you pull it up. And I would do this sort of three times alternating. So if I add, if I brought it, if I cross them over one way, so my left one is in front of the right one, on the next one I would cross it over the other way, so my 
right one would be in front of my left one. Now, surgeon's knot, you start off exactly the same. You cross your ends and you bring your end through. But instead of just bringing it through one, you're going to bring it through twice and pull this up. So you're creating more of a loop around elastic itself because it has got a little bite. Um, I always say is the elastic bites into itself and I'm adding loads of little pulls, not sort of one big pull. Also, I would add a little bit of nail varnish or a tiny bit of glue and the way how I would add that is, if I pull this out, I would add it on the tail end just above the knot hold my elastic sort of um, the knot towards my table and the end, I would hold the end up so I would let gravity just to seep the nail varnish on the top of my knot because I don't want the nail varnish to go all over underneath and uh, sort of my knot because it can harden your elastic and make it brittle and then I would trim the ends, I'm just going to leave that there for a second and bring in a second strand of elastic no, wrong one I picked up the wrong one and I'm going to start here so I want my second knot in, inside this rivulet hordle as well so I would take my end and I would exit from inside going out with my second strand then I would do my pattern as normal I would pick up a spacer bead let me just pop this down so I can hold it better pick up a little spacer bead now the elastic I'm using is 0.8 you can also use 0.6 for this 0.6 is probably you get it through your spacer bees easier. I think I picked up the wrong one yesterday. But never mind, it, it works as well. Go on down. So that is my little two millimeter spacer, and then I'm going into straight the first. Rivoli holder, but to the other hole. There we go. And out to the other side, adding another spacer bead, and then so on, going all the way around. Um, Lauren is saying, like the flowers that Sarah just made, but on. <clears throat> larger scale as a tree topper. We mean to use these as the middle of the flower. I think that would look really good as well. Um, all you would have to do is to put, instead of putting sort of elastic, you just put a little bit of wire through the holes and the tie in front of it into the middle. Well, that would look really good on the brooch as well. Oh, Lorna, thank you so much. I'm going to tell that to Sarah to try out, to add the Rivoli in front of the um, in front of one of those brooches because I think it would give you a really nice focal point. I don't think this one is cut properly at the end. Sometimes when you cut it, you can have a little bit of bobble on the end of your elastic, and it's harder to. Add. Yeah, that was the problem. I didn't. content and again I'm just going to go along and go to the next one and so on adding I'm just going to go to this one and pull it out straight to show you it's like you know very very easy I love working with sort of sparkly things. I was definitely a map buy in a previous life. And I'm pulling it through. So you would go all the way around and you would knot your elastic 
in your open um, link there and that would make a really nice straight bracelet. Now if you add it to a necklace and you want it to do a curve end, which I'll show you in a minute, you would have to add a two different size of pearls or different size of spaces. You would add a smaller one at the top and a bigger one at the bottom and then that would naturally curve your pattern. And once you added your strand all the way around, um, I would add the little glue or nail varnish on the top of the knots and trim the ends. And then basically you just go back to do the same thing. You add a, crisp, a little rivoli onto the top. I keep wanting to say crystal because they're so sparkly. We just add a little rivoli. Don't forget you trim your ends. They are inside there. Add a rivoli to the top and then you would um, fold the ends over as normal. Uh, and he's saying, I bet Sarah is shattered today. She seems to be having to talk so fast and creating craft to fit everything into the 45 minutes. Oh yes, so when, when you're up there, and I'm going to be back to the studios um, very soon, you only got um, some, but sometimes like you can talk back as well, so you have got this little earpiece in your ear and you can hear what the director and the producer is saying in the background in the gallery and um, they're saying oh you only got two minutes for this demo you only got one minute 30 seconds for this demo and they keep reminding you because they want to show you as much as they can but obviously like you only get like two minutes for one little demo and sometimes in two minutes you can't really show um everything but like you know you, you keep from beginning to end especially not um you, you're not able to show it and brenda's saying um can it be used for acrylic as well? It is relatively inexpensive and flattens prongs better. I think she is replying to somebody else. Margaret saying, love watching and learning from you, Kitty. We never go through. Oh, bless you. Well, we love doing these little videos as well. I think it's uh, for me, both me and Sarah really got us through sort of the thick of the lockdown because it was our interactions with um, other people as well. Um, you know, outside of the family, outside of our little bubble. Um, Richard Sling, I think you should get a double slot. Love the demos. Oh, bless. Um, yeah, um, I think we had a double hour once um, when we launched the USB, maybe, back in April. Um, I quite sort of, there's so much things going on and so much things happening. My memory is like not what it used to be and I sort of always forget. I find creating craft uh, far too rushed for 45 minutes, not long enough. Um, that's what Lorna is saying. Um, I don't know, like sort of they change the format from one hour to 45 minutes. I can see pros and cons to it as well. Um, I don't know. I think everybody's kind of sort of getting used to it now, but definitely for jewellery is difficult to show a good demo and show everything in sort of two minutes or three minutes what they like allocating you that you can do your demo in. Right, so that's it for me today. Do you have a got it? I want to show you what we're doing tomorrow. So tomorrow we are doing the tubular netting. Um, and that's why I'm going to, if the weather is holds out and it's going to be sunny, I'm going to go and sit on the veranda and I am going to be making little colour samples. Like, let me just turn you back down to show you. Um, tubal netting is a technique. We're going to do it with 3mm crystals, um, size 15 and size 11 seed beads. I'm just making all oh, look at the sea foam. I love this one. Um, this is Sarah's colour, but I think I might make one for myself. Um, we did very nice and easy and relaxing um, sort of stitch, but equally like this steely color as well. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. I'm going to make all the little color samples so I can show it to you. I usually leave the thread long so I can go back and um, finish off and add more to the length later once I went through. Because again, I didn't just have to... Um, I couldn't just work out one color. I had to play with. I think I was playing. I bought home like 14 or 16 colors to play with, um, to see which one is gonna be a good one. So that's it for me today. Um, are they bacon or round? They are round, three millimeter ones. You can do them with bicons, but I find rounds just sit better in the tubular netting than bicons. Um, bicons do make your 
um, stitching a little bit is sort of stretchy and with rounds they just sort of fit in each other and they sit really really nicely right so that's it for me today do have a lovely day and um, do check out on the website the bundle today where you get two in, in a box you get 200 uh, Rivoli's winter holders you get the stretch elastic as well as the backings and the in two colors so you get silver and gold with it and you get your Space of beads as well. Um, it's twenty nine ninety nine today. It makes about ten bracelets. As well, it makes a few more depending on what size of a wrist you have. Do you have a lovely day? And I'll be back tomorrow with the tubular netting. Um, yeah, so stay, keep safe. Um, if it's windy or rainy where you are, stay inside. Keep on crafting. Keep on beading. And I will see you tomorrow. Do you have a lovely day? Bye.